first time on this program, political commentator Ron Gregory from WVStatewide.com making his debut appearance. Good morning, Ron. Thanks for being with us. Well, good morning. I have to admit that most of the time my first appearance is usually my last, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> that has happened to me many times. <laughs> I've often said a little bit of me goes a long way. Yeah, that will have two of us. Yeah. Hey, uh, Ron, first and foremost, uh, I know uh, there are many people in our audience who are aware of what you do and the work you've done because we've got a pretty politically aware audience. But for those who are fairly casual in their political followings, could you uh, give us a little rundown on your career and uh, what you've been doing? I uh, currently uh, write for WVStatewide.com. We have uh, various uh, uh, opportunities for listeners to uh, interface, to learn about the current state of politics in West Virginia, which includes podcasts and uh, various interviews. We do update the news with uh, breaking news throughout the day. Um, It's, to me, who have been doing this as far as politics for more than 50 years, it's very impressive to see how we put that information forward. So I'd urge the uh, listener to go to our website our website, take a look at what we do. Uh, and again, we cover uh, current politics. We, I do a column, a weekly column that I've been doing on and off uh, for 50 years or more. And um, they, I like to highlight some political history. I like to talk about Governor Moore, for example. I call myself a more, still a more Republican. Uh, I think that uh, figures into my thought process is when I'm thinking about who I'm for for governor or who I, who I think will win for governor and who's running running the best races and that sort of thing. Um, I'm a former public official as well. I was mayor of my hometown of Glenville, Gilmer County, uh, when I was 26 years old. From 26 to 28 years old, I was mayor of Glenville. I've been the Kanawha County Administrator or Manager, however you want to term it. We call it Kanawha County Manager. I've managed public service districts um, and done various things in the the public sector. So I've seen both sides of the track, and I've seen both sides of the track as far as good good servants and what we'd call maybe not less or a little less than that. So I like to do comments on what's going on. We'd like to start off, first and foremost, by getting your thoughts on Governor Justice's chances at a U.S. Senate seat. Given uh, more of the noise surrounding his candidacy because of his business practices, bills due, repossessions, tax issues, and such, will any of it make a dent in his chances of becoming a senator? I'm, I have to apologize for there was a blip in my phone and I did not hear who you asked me about. Yeah, Governor Jim Justice. Will any of the noise surrounding the existence of Governor Justice, the financial issues, the tax issues, will any of that make a dent in his chances for becoming the next senator? Well, certainly up until now it has not. And I've been uh, been shocked. Well, not maybe you can't be shocked this far along in politics, but I've been very surprised. Of, at the fact that the, the average voter does not seem to have one whiff of any kind of concern about those financial dealings. Uh, one would think that when you have a person who is in charge in all technical and literal facts with taking care of the state budget, that you would be concerned about someone who is a billionaire at one point in the Forbes magazine rankings and is now less than that in seven years of as being governor. Um, I think that um, the governor is very, you know, he reacted very strongly to the latest challenge, which was the court sending U.S. Marshals out to pick up a helicopter. I don't know whether they've ever repossessed your helicopter or not, but I would think that would be a pretty uh, <laughs> pretty big operation, and you would think the public would be very, very concerned about that. 
and wonder what on earth is going on. I mean, his family owns many businesses, owns the Greenbrier Hotel, the resort. And uh, one would think they would be above that parade, but that would not be something you'd be being concerned about repossessing a helicopter, but uh, as we have. I think it will have some effect. Um, Congressman Mooney will, will campaign hard, as I've said many times. He also knows how to, how to hit, hit the opponent with uh, both barrels, so he will go after the, uh, the opponent. He will go after Jim Justice. Uh, it could turn into a very interesting race at the end. In fact, uh, our website is doing our second poll. We did one earlier in which uh, Justice was far, far ahead like he's been in all the others. It'll be interesting to see if he's still 30 points ahead in a poll that we're going to release on the 16th. Bill Stumblefield. Uh, good morning, Ron. Uh, glad that you were able to join us this morning. Uh, I know that you cover the southwestern part of the state more so than the northeastern part, uh, but we have a situation in our local county, uh, Jason County, where a couple of the county commissioners are boycotting uh, the uh, the meetings. Uh, are you aware of what's happening in Jefferson County? And if you are, do you have an opinion? Yeah, I'm aware of what's happened there. I uh have said good things about uh, Trish Jackson making that run for um, state auditor. Uh, I am absolutely dumbfounded again at the uh, level to which people, elected officials, are willing to go. I, I was surprised that two of them agreed, she being one of them, agreed to... Uh, boycott, I guess, or whatever term they wanted to use, uh, special meetings that were called by the, by the president. Uh, that's, that's very unusual, as I'm sure you and all the listeners know. I think there must be some, there should be some cooling off period somehow, uh, or not much is going to be accomplished uh, in Jefferson County by the county commission. And that's, that's too, too bad. That, that, uh, uh, the county has all kind of opportunities to grow, to be a more, certainly as far as political influence. I've always thought that the Eastern Panhandle would get to the point where basically it would control statewide elections. We're getting closer and closer to that. One of the things that happened, uh, and it's not statewide, but one of the things that happened uh, as far as Congressman Mooney, who I mentioned there a little bit earlier, is concerned was that he uh, having an Eastern Panhandle address was able in each of his elections to really win the election before he left the Eastern Panhandle in a district that included Charleston. Uh, you know, famously, we tell the story in Charleston about Danny Jones, who was the longtime mayor of the capital city, and he said. Uh, near the end of his uh, tenure, which was a couple of decades, he said that he thought it was interesting that he had never met, and Danny was a longtime Republican, he had never met con his congressman, Congressman Mooney in Charleston, and frankly, Congressman Mooney didn't need to have any vote, votes that he needed in Charleston or Putnam County, so he very seldom was there. Yeah. Uh, in preparation for today's uh, uh, interview, I looked at some of your, your recent writings, and I say you do it, you cover the full spectrum of politics, but you did something I found to be very unusual and I found to be heartwarming. Uh, you paid a tribute to Judge Joanna Tabbitt, who died last week, a couple of weeks ago. Would you very quickly repeat that story you told? Yeah, I had a friend who was involved in some legal action. Judge Tabbitt, Judge Joanna Tabbitt, was the judge in the case, and he was uh, appearing in Kanawha County Circuit Court to testify about the case he was involved in. And he was very nervous. He's 80-plus years old, very nervous, um, very uh, out of uh, out of his normal environment, and it was clear, it was obvious, anybody could see it. 
even with just him sitting there. When he gave answers, it was very obvious. And so Judge Tabbitt sat there a few minutes, and they exchanged a few words. And then Judge Tabbitt asked my friend, uh, would you mind? I really would rather not sit up here on this bench. I'd like to come down and sit at the witness table across from you and let, let's talk about this case. And he quickly said, oh, gee, okay. And she did. She came down off of the bench. She sat down across from him. She asked him what happened. They were eventually asked him what happened. She asked him some things about his health and things like that that he readily answered for her. And then they talked about the case. She had him tell the story. And as I said in the column, it was more like a uh, grandchild listening to her grandfather tell a story of something that might have happened in her life than it was a witness on the witness stand. And uh, she was very kind. She was very considerate of him. She relieved him of the stress and all the pressure that was on him. And uh, I was just, uh, although she was certainly a liberal and she was thought of a, as a liberal, ran for the state Supreme Court with the backing of many of the liberal skions of the state, she uh, certainly performed that day as a compassionate, understanding human. She, he was relaxed after she talked to him a few minutes. Uh, she was really, really impressive in that case. We had Judge Tabbitt on the program a couple of times when she was running for Supreme Court Justice. She's uh, swinging by the Eastern Panhandle and came in and sat in on the show a couple of times. I found her to be uh, a very uh, polite, uh, an engaging, enjoyable, warm guest, and uh, we very much enjoyed having her on the program. I was tremendously saddened uh, by reading of her passing. Uh, Ron, so I appreciate you sharing that story with us. Mike Height, as in Delegate Mike Height. Good morning, Ron. How are you this morning? Yeah, I'm well, I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm doing well as well. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question about your website. Um, is it just you, or do you have people around the state that, that write opinion pieces for you and send them to you? We have people around the state and are actively looking for more people around the state. We've had conversations with uh, several weekly publications uh, and, and throughout the, the entire state, we would like to have what we are calling correspondence as far as uh, correspondence with our website. Uh, it's absolutely uh, overwhelming, as you can imagine, for one human being to try to cover the entire state from, from Wheeling to Princeton to Harper's Ferry to Huntington. And... Um, we certainly need to do that. We'd like to be able to share our news with local papers, like the papers there in the Eastern Panhandle, uh, and let let us share their news. Uh, we're working that out with some entities, and I think uh, I think you'll see much more presence of us in some other publications pretty soon. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, I, I realize you uh, you cover mostly a statewide news, a local news. Uh, I did not see any reference to national news. But what do you think of the third parties on the national scale? Are they going to uh, uh, get traction this year or next year? I think they will get some traction. Uh, you know, it, obviously, I don't think they can win. Um, I, I would be shocked if they could. Senator Manchin has played with uh, the no-label type uh, uh, operation of becoming an independent, running for president. I still do not think that's what he's going to do. I, I continue to believe, that despite some evidence to the contrary, uh, that he will run for re-election to the Senate. Um, the, the biggest evidence to the contrary is probably the fact that his... Uh, closest political advisor, Larry Puccio, has already picked out uh, Governor Justice as a replacement for Senator Manchin, and it would be difficult, many people think, for Larry, who I call political genius, uh, it would be impossible for him to clearly switch to, to Manchin now that he's done as much as he has for Justice. 
Uh, and I don't know how he would handle that. I have no idea. But I know he's good at what he does. But nationwide, they there's a possibility that if you have a candidate of the stature of Senator Manchin, who's very, very well known from one corner of the country to the other, if you had a candidate like him, they would get a, uh, a significant vote, I think. And I think it would be very detrimental uh, to President Biden if he happens to be running for re-election. I think it would be difficult for him uh, because they will tend to be more moderate than the, probably the Republican candidate, particularly if it's President Trump. And uh, so I think they would be pulling votes from uh, from President Biden. I think the big net effect that they would have would be that they would uh, maybe defeat him and uh, um, make sure that President Trump returns to the White House. Ron, I'm, I'd, I'd like to get your opinion of recently, in the past four or five weeks, we've had several delegates resign, and it seems like that's uh, been more this year than in past years. So I'd like to get your, your take on that, and, and do you think that's an anomaly this year? Well, I think it is. In fact, I was having the same thoughts myself as soon as I learned that yet another uh, had resigned. I was thinking that the governor of justice has had more than uh, adequate opportunity to fill spots in both the House and the Senate during his uh, now about seven years as governor. Uh, I don't like that. I mean, I don't think that's good. Uh, hopefully there would be, and it doesn't matter, philosophy or who, which person we're talking about seems to me that we're always best served if the public um, has an opportunity to have input into who represents them. Um, I, that's one reason, uh, switching back to a subject we talked about earlier, there have been some and with relationship to the Jefferson County Commission, which doesn't seem to be able to choose a replacement uh, commissioner either, uh, which has to be has to be chosen by the sitting commissioners, the ones who are still there. They don't seem to be able to choose somebody. And a an election has been mentioned. Let's just have an election of the public. Well, that would be great. But as most of us know, some some don't seem to. There is a difference between a democracy and a republic. Republic, and we are a republic. And we don't vote on every issue that comes down the track. Our representatives are there to represent us on some things as a, as a Republican form of government with a small R. Uh, my hesitation with having a special election in that case is that the West Virginia Code does not call for it. So I don't know whether an expenditure for a special election would be legal or not. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. Uh, it seems that it might be questionable. But um, I have noticed early on the people that, back to your question, the, early on the people that the governor appointed didn't do very well at election time. I'm not sure what the balance is right now, but the public was not always happy with who he named. That's not the way to run a representative government. That's not the way to have people sitting in Charleston representing the uh, views of the people of Jefferson, Berkeley, Morgan, any of the counties in the state, the public needs to choose them. And so I don't I don't like the way it's worked out. <clears throat> Ron Gregory is our guest, political commentator for WVStatewide.com. Uh, this is his first appearance on our program. You can uh, read uh, his work again at WVStatewide.com. Uh, Ron, in uh, 2022, when you were doing your predictions and you were going to the House of Delegates, you, one of your predictions was that uh, Zaria Lansdowne, who is a Democrat, would beat Mike Hornby, who is the owner of this facility, by the way, uh, in an election for House of Delegates. It would have been, uh, and I think it was at that time, your only Democrat prediction in the Eastern Panhandle. If you recall going back to that time, why you thought that that district was ripe for a Democratic candidate in the Eastern Panhandle, uh, can you give us your reasoning behind that? Well, my reasoning is, is much simpler than it should be, and obviously it was wrong. 
I had been in the Eastern Panhandle, very interested in the uh, uh, congressional race at, at that time. And I thought from what I was hearing door to door in that district that um, your, the station owner would not be the winner of that election, that he, in fact, would lose. Um, I got that from several outspoken people who told me that that was going to happen. They understood politics. They knew what was going on. And uh, I, got, I think I got the, well, obviously got the wrong advice. And um, so I, that's, it's really that simple. Uh, sometimes on the campaign trail, I, my, I instinctually decide that something's going to happen. Usually I'm right, having been around it so long, but in this case I was absolutely wrong. I guess I was talking to the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, as you look across the state, and I understand uh, the word is broken that Doug Scaff is uh, uh, long rumored to be switching parties, has switched parties, and has declared for a statewide office. How do you like Doug's chances? Oh, I'm sure he stands a chance. He's already raised he, half a million dollars. He's a millionaire himself. He'll he'll be able to put uh, perhaps not an unlimited amount of money, but he certainly can put the kind of money into the race that it might take to, to get elected. His challenge is to convince Republicans, because now he's become a Republican, the, the fashionable thing to do these days. Uh, he uh, may need, he will need to convince Republicans that he's one of them. He's already started that by saying he's pro uh, guns and and so so forth. I don't know that his uh, voting record backs that up, but uh, I think he'll do a good job of selling himself. He's uh, very personable. He's uh, easy to talk to. He has, as I said, all kind of money, but he acts like the average common person. Uh, I think that he stands a real chance of winning that. The challenge, again, will be to convince Republicans that, you know, he really is a Republican. As I said to Doug Reynolds, pub publisher of the Huntington Herald Dispatch and the Charleston Gazette Mail, uh, I asked him when he had an epiphany that he he was a Republican after all, <laughs> after being a Democrat all these years. He really didn't have an answer for that. Uh, Doug needs to explain, and he is trying to. He says that the state National Democrat Party left him. He didn't leave them. And uh, so I think he'll put on a, a great campaign, and I would be worried if I were an opponent that uh, Doug Scaff will probably end up the winner in that race. There's been a lot of people lately who've been having that born again Republican moment yeah, as they're, the they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're discovering <laughs> Republicanism all of a sudden. Final minute, Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, uh, quickly. There's a State Board of Education a couple of days ago put out a scorecard, if you will, that I felt to be uh, quite an indictment against our school system. Is that getting any traction through the state? Very little that I have seen. I think that the uh, again, we're, we keep talking about the average voter. I'm not sure the average voter uh, catches the importance, the value of what's being said. I'm not sure that they can uh, reason how it's important it is to them that um, teachers, personnel, everybody in the education system performs well if their children are going to be served well. Uh, hopefully there'll be more publicity it, if it ends up being like Jim Justice's death I'm afraid there won't be enough publicity for it to have much effect on election Ron great having you on the program here today I hope you enjoyed your first appearance with us well I certainly did and I'll be happy to come back sometime and uh, we'll talk about um, how things are in the eastern panhandle and I'll tell you how things are in Williamson. <laughs> that sounds okay. like a fair fight there. I like that. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Love to have you back again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ron Gregory, WVStatewide.com political commentator.